This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. We're talking about raising money from long-term borrowings. Uh, I think you should already be happy, but some people get terribly confused about this. We call it long-term debt. We mean debt borrowings. Uh, and I have to say this because it does upset some people. Debt usually means people owe you money. But when we talk about long-term debt borrowing, we're talking about things like long-term loans where we've borrowed money. Right? So you're okay what I'm talking about. Again, I'm a small company. I need 100,000 to buy a new machine. If I don't get it from shareholders, the other way is to get a long-term loan. Okay? Well, here again, three things you need to be aware of. The first one is the one I need to be less, by far the most obvious. Clearly, if I wanted 100,000, the obvious thing for me to do is go to the bank and borrow it. Right? Would you agree? You know, we've got long-term money. You know, we talked about short-term money last time, but long-term money, I'm buying, you know, trying to expand the company. I'll go and borrow, go to Hansa Bank and borrow 100,000 for 10 years or something, a fixed loan. Right? Well, I don't really need to say much more there. The first is simply a long-term loan. Uh, the long-term loan, now you're, you're going to laugh at me here, but it's something the examiner always writes. Certainly as a small company, I think even before I went to the bank, the first thing I'd do is see if I know any rich people. To your, no, you laugh, but he always says... For a small company, a long-term loan, you would look to rich friends or relatives or of course if you didn't have rich friends or relatives, you go to the bank. So sorry, there's nothing magical, it's only for written. It's almost too obvious that people don't write it, but too. If you were a tiny company, if you've got a terribly rich grandmother, I think it has to borrow the money there first, rather than go messing around with sweat bankers up there. If it's kind of sense. Alright? Alright, well I referred to before about small companies, large companies. Clearly, a large, La Telecom isn't going to look for rich friends or relatives. That would only be relevant for a small company. A bank loan clearly could be either large or small. Uh, the only thing is, though, certainly for a large company, the kind of being problems. It's all right me trying to get 100,000 from Hansa Bank. But if I was someone like La Telecom and I wanted to borrow 10 million, I think they'd find it much harder to raise just by a bank loan. You know what I mean? Well, you can have consortiums of banks agreeing to lend. But clearly, there is that much more of a problem. True? Oh, that's probably my fault. I'm sorry. I said uh, a bank loan. If it's simply I want a hundred thousand, obviously go to the bank and help with it lending money. But if I was someone like that telecom and I wanted to borrow ten million, I think it might be a bit harder. You certainly have a job finding one bank to lend you ten million. You know, perhaps you can have a group of banks in London, but there is that before a problem. Well, fine, I don't need to say more there. You all know what a loan is. However, large companies, 
have another way of filing which isn't available to small companies. And it's called traded debt. And this is what I need to say a few words about. It's a combination of terminology, um, well, really only terminology, a couple of very easy numbers. But without him expecting pages and pages, you'll never expect very much. You must know what we mean by trading debt. And now it's actually referred to what? Uh, before I explain, you'll see why, but I will write down immediately. This is only available to large quoted companies. You'll see why in a minute. Large quoted companies. There's no way a small company like mine could do this. The only way I could borrow money is an ordinary loan, whether it's a friend or a it's a friend. Right? But first of all, what traded debt is, is this. Let me just speak for a few minutes and then I'll write down the key points. Suppose I am a large company and I wanted to borrow a million. Well, instead of just going to one lender, what I can do is this. I put an advert in the paper saying, I want to borrow a million and asking people to lend me money. I'll tell you what rate of interest I'm uh, offering. I'll say, I want to borrow a million. I'm offering 10% interest. Uh, I'll repay the money in 10 years. So all the terms are there. And I ask people to lend me money. Uh, and I say, lend me whatever you like. I'll say, you have to lend me in units of $100. I'll say, I'll write all this down. But there'll be a little coupon that will be advert. Lara is prepared to lend me 1000 She fills in the coupon, sends off 1000 Uh Marita looks quite rich. She's going to lend me 10000 and so on. But you all lend what you want to lend, if you understand me. I send you a certificate. Just like shares. You know, if you buy shares, you get a share certificate, although these days it tends to be electronic. But I'll send you a certificate saying, you've lent me this much money. She's lent me a thousand, she's lent me ten thousand, whatever. And from then on, every year, you'll get 10% interest on the amount you lent to me. And in 10 years' time, or whatever I promised, I'll repay the amount. You want some of it? It's just like issuing shares. You know, if you issue new shares, effectively you do, and generally there's an advert in the paper with a bit you can cut off. If you want to buy shares, you know, you fill in the form and you send me money. Well, here, exactly the same, except you lend me a thousand, you lend me ten thousand, I send you a certificate, and from then on, there are shares, obviously, you'll be hoping you get a dividend. With these, you will get the interest each year, and ten years or whatever, I will repay you. Say again? And yes, I'll tell you what we call them in a minute, the various names they can be given. But again, is everybody with me at the moment? However, the last thing before I write anything, what makes these beautiful? Is if I just get a loan from the bank, or if I just go to a rich person and say, Mary, to lend me 10,000, an ordinary loan, she then has to sit and wait 10 years before she gets a loan back. These, this borrowing I'm talking about, where Laura lent me a thousand, my turn to ten thousand, I send me certificates. Every year I'll be given interest, ten years repay. But these certificates 
are traded on the stock exchange just for shares. Marriage has a choice. She can either just keep hold of a certificate and she'll keep getting interest and then I'll repay. But if she decides she wants her money back sooner, she can sell the certificate. She can sell it to Editor. And from then on, Editor will get the interest and Editor will get the repayment. And just like shares the trading on the stock exchange, uh, when you see the list of share prices and things, you'll also see the prices of these, if you with me. You can buy and sell the certificates. All right, if there's not much more to say. Before I say any more, just let me summarise what I've said so far. It's traded debt. We call this, now this has various names. It's They're called either debentures, which now is rather old-fashioned. More commonly these days, loan stock or loan notes. Loan stock, loan notes. Uh, or in America, <laughs> bonds. And the exam, you can call them any of those. The most likely is loan stock or loan notes. But they all mean exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference. It's just different names for the same thing. Are we clear? Um, secondly, without, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to write every word I said. Uh, but secondly, uh, when you raise the money, I said you ask people to buy certificates. Well, we can't mess around and Andres say, I'll lend you $262.33 or something, would be mad. Uh, they're normally issued in units of $100. Now, if I manage in a rule, they can be issued in different units. Some companies issue them in units of $1,000. For the exam, though, they're always $100 units. So you all hear what I mean. You, know, you have to lend amounts that are multiples of $100. Okay? Um, they carry fixed interest. Uh, they repaid on the due date. What I mean there is, I've already said, when you originally advertise that you're borrowing money, you will state the rate of interest, you will state the date you repay, all right? Very fairly obviously. Uh, I say fixed interest, in fact, they can be issued at floating interest. You know, you, people um, raise money sometimes and say, We'll pay interest at 2% above the Bank of Latvia rate or something like that. You all understand me? Uh, that, though, they, they tend to be very unpopular. People don't like that. Almost always, and certainly always in the exam, they'll be offering a fixed rate of interest. You're offered 10%, lend the money, you then guarantee 10% in your Okay? Finally, and what's so important, the reason they call traded debt is the certificates are traded on the stock exchange. You know what I mean? You can buy and sell them just like you can buy and sell shares. It's exactly the same. 
All right, shares, you effectively own the company and you get dividends. Uh, debt, traded debt. You don't own the company, you're not a shareholder, obviously. Uh, and you get fixed interest, but otherwise you've got a certificate you can buy it, so. Yeah. Okay.